Hey guys. All right. So let's see. We're going to be reading chapter 14 today. And we left off where Marty was going through the woods with Shiloh. And he heard a rifle sound. And then, sure enough, it was none other than Judd Travers. So here we go. We're going to pick up with chapter 14. Only two chapters left, guys. Two. This one and then the one I'll read tomorrow. All right. Here we go. Chapter 14. He's wearing this army camouflage shirt, a brown cap, and the weirdest grin that could fit on a human face. Wowie! He says, holding the rifle up with one hand as he plows through the weeds. I got her! Wooey! I know he ha he wasn't out shooting rabbits and happened to get a doe instead. Because he doesn't have his hounds with him, Judd Travers had gone out that morning with the clear intention of getting himself a deer. I also know that if the game warden, the person who um, makes all the rules for hunting, finds out about it, Judd's in big trouble because the deer he shot out of season wasn't even a buck. A buck is the male deer with the antlers. He slogs over through waist high weeds to where the doe lays, bending over and looking at her, walks around her a little a little piece. Then he says, Wooey. Again, soft like. That's when I come out of the woods. He's got his back to me now, his hands on the doe's front legs, trying to see if he can pull her to himself drags her a little way and stops. And when he looks up again, I'm right beside him. He whirls around. W where'd you come from? He says. Was on my way to see you, I tell him. And for the first time, standing next to Judd Travers, I feel taller than I really am. He looks at me a moment, like he don't know if he's glad I'm here or not. Then I guess he figures me being here, only a kid don't matter. Look what I got, he says. Found her eating my garden this morning, and I chased her over here. That's a lie, I say. I was back in the woods watching her eat. She was coming down from the hill the other way. You went out deer hunting for anything you could get. Well, supposing I did, says Judd Travers, and he hates me worse now. Deer, deer ain't in season, that's what, I answer. There's a $200 fine for killing a doe. Female deer. Judd Travers is staring at me like he's about to crack me across the mouth. Way we're raised around here, children don't talk back to grown folks. Don't hardly talk much at all, in fact. Learn to listen. Keep your mouth shut. Learn the grown folks do the talking. And here I am, shooting off my mouth at 5.30 in the morning to a man holding a rifle. Am I crazy or what? Not unless the game warden finds out. There's not, Judd says. And who's going to tell him? You? All at once I realize I got Judd Travers right where I want him. One way you look at it, it's my duty to report a killed doe. That's why folks up here look at it. That's the way they look at it. Though that's snitching. And if I might could tell, but bargain not to, it's something else. It's called blackmail. But like I said, I, gotta get, I got to the place I'd almost do anything to save Shiloh. Yeah, I say, my heart pounding like crazy. I'll tell. There's a free number to call. There is, too. It's on Dad's hunting regulations paper. Boy, I sure didn't know I was going to step into all this when I come up here this morning. Now Judd's looking at me, eyes narrowed down to little slits. Your pa put you up to this? No, this is me talking. Well, ain't you something now? And who's going to believe you? I'll get the game warden up here. Show him the spot that the doe hit, the blood. And when he finds the deer at your place, he'll believe me. The words are coming out quicker than I can think. I'll tell him he was eating my garden. And I'll say different. The new game warden won't make any allowance, even if the deer was eating your garden. You just don't shoot deer out of season. No way. Especially a doe. Now Judd's really angry, and his words come out at me like bees. What you trying to do, boy? Start up trouble? You think I can't put you in your place mighty quick? So what you gonna do? 
I ask. Shoot me? Travers is so surprised his jaw drops. But I'm cooking now. Nothing can stop me. Braver than I ever been in my whole life. Going to shoot me like that dog I found up here six months back with a bullet in its head? Traver stares at me some more. I know whose bullet that was, Judd. I told my dad, and if folks find me up here with a bullet in me, dad will know whose bullet it is, too. I can hardly believe the words coming out of my mouth. Been scared most of my life of Judd Travers, and here I am, half his size, talking like a grown person. It's because I know Shiloh's still got a chance. So what you waiting for? Judd finally says. Go get the game warden. And when I don't move, he says, Come off it, Marty. Here. You take one of those legs, I'll take another. We'll drag it to my place and I'll give you half the meat. And don't tell your ma. Won't be glad to get it. I don't want the meat. I want Shiloh. Now Judd's really surprised, whistles through his teeth. Whew, boy, you just come up here to set me up, didn't you? Didn't have an idea in the world you was out with your rifle, I tell him, and that's one of the first truths I've told in weeks. I come up here because it's Sunday, the day you said to bring your dog back, and I wanted you to know you gotta fight me to get him first. Now I'm telling you, I mean to keep him, and you expect to keep that deer without a fine? You'll make a trade. Whoa, says Travers. That's no kind of trade at all. If I hadn't got me a deer this morning, what would you have bargained with then? I didn't have an answer to that because I had, hadn't been thinking about a deal. Judd already had said he wouldn't sell Shiloh. Judd's eyes narrowed down even more till it almost looks like he's asleep. I just bet you would tell the game warden too. Jesus' name I would. And you're saying... If I let you keep my hunting dog, you're going to keep this deer a secret. I begin to see now I'm no better than Judd Travers, willing to look the other way to get something I want. But the something is Shiloh. Yes, I will, I tell him, not feeling all that great about it. Well, you got to do more than that, boy, because I paid $35 for that dog, and I want 40 to let him go. For the first time, I see a thin ray of hope that maybe he'll let me buy Shiloh. I'll get you the money somehow, by and by, I promise. I don't want the money, by and by. I want it now. And if you haven't got it now, you work for me and you pay it off. You make a deal with Judd Travers and you're only 11 years old. You take what you can get. But all I'm thinking is dog. You got a bargain, I tell Judd. And now my feet want to dance, my face wants to smile, but I don't dare let the delight show through. You listen here, says Judd. I'll pay you two dollars an hour. That comes to twenty hours to earn forty dollars. And the work ain't easy. I'll do it, I say. Beginning now, says Judd. And I can tell he's getting a bit edgy that someone else might come through the field wondering about those rifle shots and how he got a doe. Help me get this deer to my trailer. I'm so glad to be getting Shiloh I can hardly think straight, but I'm thinking straight enough as I help drag that doe to Judd's to know that by letting him get away with this, I'm putting other deer in danger. He'll kill one this season, out of season, and then he'll figure maybe he can kill some more. To save Shiloh, I'm making it harder for deer. I swallow. All I gotta do, though, is think of the way he'd look at me. I ever give him back to Judd, and then I get on with my job. When we get to the trailer at last, we carry the deer around the three-sided shed Judd's got in the backyard. First thing Judd does is bleed the doe, keep the meat from spoiling. Then he goes out and messes up the tracks with his foot, kicking up the grass where, where it was matted down, where the deer was laying, and covering the trail of blood with dust. I get home from work every day at three, Judd says. And I want you here when I pull up. You work for me two hours a day, five days a week. I want that wood back there stacked. I want the weeds cut, the grass mowed. I want my beans picked, the corn hoed. Whatever you can think to be done, that's what you do. And I want it, you here doing all that starting tomorrow. I'll be here, I says. But I want it in writing that after I do 20 hours work for you, Shiloh belongs to me. Travers grunts. 
and goes to his trailer. He comes out with a piece of grocery stack and the words, Beagle hunting dog to Marty Preston for 20 hours work, Judd Travers. It occurs to me suddenly that maybe after I do the work, he'll try to pay me off with one of his other dogs. Right, Shiloh, I tell him. He gives me a pained look that crosses out and crosses out Beagle and writes Shiloh in its place. But don't spell it right. Leaves off the H at the end. I take the paper and put it in my pocket. I'll be here tomorrow, I say. And you ever tell anyone about this dear boy, you're going to be more than sorry you opened your lips. You got my word, I say, which considering all the lying I've been doing lately didn't seem like it amounted to much. It did, though. I walk away from Judge Trailer in a sort of zigzag line, half expecting a bullet in the back at any moment, even though I'm pretty sure he wouldn't. Soon as I'm out of sight, though, I race through the woods, heart going thumpity thump, can't keep the smile back any longer. Shiloh's mine. The words keep coming back again and again. He's safe. Should feel even more joyful, though. Thought once if I could get Shiloh for myself, it would be the finest day of my life. In a way, it is. But in a way, it isn't. Could be Judd gave in Claus. Sorry. Could be Judd gave in because... He couldn't think of nothing else to do at the moment. Said I could have Shiloh because he needed some help with that deer. Could be that once he got rid of the evidence, he'll tell me to go ahead and get the warden and that I wasn't, I wasn't to have his dog. Could even say that he never wrote on the grocery sack and that I wrote it myself. I don't think so, though. What worries me most is that Judd could go through with the bargain, give Shiloh to me, but then someday, when Shiloh's running free in the woods by himself... Judd might put, put a bullet in his head just to spite me. All right, that's the end of that chapter. Thanks for tuning in, guys.